All right, good early morning to you. Uh, so now in 6.4, we're gonna be talking about inverse functions. To start uh, this conversation, we're gonna start talking about relations first. Um, and a special kind of relation is a function. We'll talk about what makes a relation a function. Uh, when we get done talking about functions, we'll talk about inverse functions and uh, how the two relate. And we'll talk about what do inverse functions look like, um, particularly their graphs, uh, the graphs of a function and its inverse function. Um, what they are exactly, what's the, what, what exactly is the meaning of an inverse function? How to find an inverse function if you're given uh, a function to start with? And when you can't find an inverse function, when a function doesn't have an inverse, okay? So, first let's talk about a relation. Um, a relation is a thing, first of all, we have a, a thing called a domain and a thing called a range. The stuff, well, domain is a set of stuff. There's a bunch of things in here. Um, you know, in our general purposes, uh, the domain might contain people or animals or cars or whatever. Uh, in math, obviously, most often, the domain will contain numbers of some kind. Uh, and also, the range will be a set of things. Uh, also a set of numbers for, uh, for our purposes. So a relation is a thing that we'll call uh, right now r of x. And all r of x is is a rule. It tells you how to take things out of the domain and send them to things in the range. Um, and maybe take them out is, is not exactly right. So. It just tells you how to relate things, relate things in the domain to the range. Um, talk about this very generally for a while, and then I'll talk about it more specifically. But um, so that's what it does. The range tells you how to take things uh, from the domain and and relate them to things in the range. Okay, uh, so it'll take this guy and it'll relate it to this guy right here. Um, and it'll take this guy and related to this guy right here and it'll also relate this one to this one. Um, it'll take this one and, and this one will also relate to that one right there. Um, that's what it does. Um, let's see, uh, you know, a relation say in New York City, this is a, not numbers, but a, a relation in New York City maybe is, uh, maybe these are taxi cab drivers and these are taxi cabs. Um, so uh, the taxi cab driver is told, hey, taxi cab driver, you are uh, in taxi cab number three today. Uh, they show up and, and they're uh, assigned to this taxi cab, or uh, you're assigned to taxi cab 17, and so that's a relation, okay? Um, in this relation, several people may use the same taxi cab, uh, and then maybe, um, Sometimes the same taxi cab driver will use two different taxi cabs. So um, that's the way a relation works. Now a function um, is very similar, but different in one particular way. So there's a domain, and there's also a range involved. And it takes things, it, it tells you how to relate something from the domain to the range. It's a function. This is a relation and this is a function. Okay. So this is a rule as well that tells you how to relate things from the domain to the range, but how to rela relate them in a very specific, special way. Um, and pay close attention because this is something that people get confused on a lot. So let's say that a uh, this, this is also a taxi cab place, um, but they they never ever um, have a taxi cab driver use two different taxi cabs. Um, they, it's just a rule they have, okay? They, they, they define it that way, and that's what a function does. It never sends one thing from the domain to two different things in the range. It never ever does that, okay? Now, this taxi cab place, um, obviously they have several shifts, and they don't want to buy a taxi cab for everybody, so this guy might use it in the morning, and then this guy might use it 
in the afternoon. So it's okay for two things in the domain to uh, go to the same thing or be uh, mapped to the same thing in the range. Okay, so that's okay. So remember that the, the things in the domain, uh, two of them can go to the same thing in the range, but one thing in the domain here cannot go to two different things in the range. You can almost think of it as like this guy cannot drive two cabs at one time. Um, but two guys may use um, the same cab in a day, right? So it's a little bit fuzzy, but hopefully that helps you see what I'm talking about. And uh, so just, just to use some numbers really quickly. Um, so with, with relations and functions, we like to use x and y. So uh, over here in x might be you know, a 3, and then we have maybe a 5 uh, and a 7. And a three again. And say this goes to one, this is related to nine. There's no particular rule that I'm using here, like add 17 or it's nothing. Um, this one might be three, and this one goes to uh, four. Okay. Um, so it just says take three and relate it to one, take five and relate it to nine, take seven and relate it to three. But then it says take three and relate it to four. This is not okay. But this, let's say um, 6 and it goes to 9, well that's okay. 5 and 6, both are related to 9. But the thing that makes this not a function is that 3 goes to 1 and 3 goes to 4 as well. Okay, so uh, here just quickly an example of a function. We'll just list these out a little easier. Okay, again, 1 goes to 2 and 5 goes to 2, but there's nothing in here that appears twice, and there's nothing in here that has two outputs, we call it, input, output. No outputs, uh, no two outputs for any one input, okay? So, now let's talk about an inverse uh, function, or an inverse relation, okay? Um, so here's our table factory, and what comes in, um, Let's say that what comes in uh, is lumber. Okay, so planks of wood go into the table factory. Out comes a little table. And what happens after that is it goes into the lumber factory. So this goes into the lumber factory. And what comes out? Well, they take the table apart and put it back into its original state uh, into a bunch of lumber. Uh, so you can see that what went in here is the same exact thing that came out here. That's what an inverse function does. It takes, uh, first something goes into a function and then it comes out of this function. Then that thing that came out goes into this function, and this function puts something out. The thing that it puts out is the same exact thing that went into this function. This function kind of undoes all the work that was done in this function, okay? So let's talk about this. And these things, when we see f of x and, and we write a rule that multiplies a number by a number and squares it and all that kind of stuff. Um, those are functions. We, we use functions all the time. We really never see relations. So don't get too hung up on, you know, when, when, when is it a relation, when is it a function. Uh, we want you to be able to tell the difference, but also um, we use functions all the time. So really after we're done talking about relations here, we're not going to be talking about them much anymore, okay? But uh, just wanted you to see relation that a function is a special kind of relation. So here we have several functions, okay? And uh, I want to look at them in two pieces. So let's look at that idea of something going in and coming out, then going immediately into another function, and then coming out uh, as the original thing, what it was to begin with, okay? Let's say that we put something into this function, say f of 2. Well. What's f of 2? Well, it's 3 times 2, it's 6. Okay, so that thing that came out, that table that came out, goes into this function. So we do g of 6. All right, let's see what happens. So we, g of 6 would be 6 divided by 3 
That's 2. 2 is exactly the thing that went into this function. In came a 2, out came a 6. In went a 6, and out came a 2. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, how about f of 3? f of 3 is 3 times 3, 3 times 3, that's 9. So 9 comes out of this, goes into this function, g of 9. And g of 9 is 9 divided by 3, that's 3. Now inverse functions need to go back and forth. Something that goes into here needs to be uh, turned back into what it was. And also if I go this way, if I put something into here and it comes out, and I put it into here and it comes out, it needs to be the same. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's say g of 15. g of 15, I put in a 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. I'll take this 5. I'll put it into this function. f of 5 is 3 times 5. And 3 times 5 is 15. OK, so 15 came in here. 5 came out. 5 went in. 15 came out. You can see that there's this undoing. Let's do this one quickly. So f of 2 here, f of 2, well f of x is x cubed plus 5. So 2 cubed is 8 plus 5 is 13. Okay, now let's take 13 and put it into this function. g of 13, well, that means 13 minus 5, that's 8. The third root of 8 is 2. 2 went in, 13 came out. 13 went in and 2 came out. 2 is exactly what went in there. Okay, so let's do g of 32. 32. So g of 32. 32 goes in. 32 minus 5 is going to be 27. The cubed root of 27 is going to be 3. So let's do, uh, let's take 3 and put it into f. f of 3 is 3 cubed, 27, plus 5, that's 32. 32 went in, 3 came out. 3 went in, 32 came out. So what went in uh, is the same thing that comes out. So what went into f is what comes out, or what went into g is the same thing that comes out of f. And so if we have this undoing, this switching back and forth, uh, we call these inverses of each other, OK? So uh, what, what is that? I mean, we're, we're taking something from one function, uh, that comes out, uh, something that comes out of a function, and putting it into another function. Well, what's that called? Well, that's exactly what we did last uh, section that was called uh, uh, composition. Composition of functions. Well, we, we put something into a function, something comes out, we take that something that came out, and it goes into the other function. So what goes into one function and then comes out, goes into another function, needs to be the same thing. So in general, what we need to be able to do, and this is how we're going to find out if things are inverses of each other, is f of g of x needs to be x. Whatever I put into, for x into g comes out of g and then immediately goes into f. This is composition. Okay. If I do all that work and I get out exactly what was put into g, we may have inverse. We have to actually check another thing. This has to happen as well. So if I could put something into G, uh, and then take that output, put that into F, and then do all that work, and then out comes the same thing that I put into G, and likewise, put something in for F, something comes out of F, put that thing that came out of F into G, and then whatever comes out of G is the thing that I originally put into F. Okay? It sound, may sound a little confusing, but it's just this. Whatever I put into f comes out, goes into g. What comes out of g is exactly what went into f. Okay, and so we're going to have to do this, you know, symbolically or in general using x's, um, so that we can um, find out if these things are inverses. Okay, um, we're going to talk about what they look like and when they can't be found in the next video.